Just when you thought things couldn't get any hotter, the streaming wars, music and video continue to heat up as more companies dive into the business. Which will succeed? Which will fail? And when will the whole thing truly go mainstream? For answers, I'm turning to Fortune writers Robert Hackett, Aaron Griffith, and Dan Roberts. Guys, thanks for being here. So we're going to play Fact or Fiction, your favorite game. Uh, you know what to do. I'm going to ask you a question. You hold up your cards, Fact or Fiction. Ready? Here we go. Fact or Fiction, one streaming music service will eventually rise above the competition and become the clear industry leader. Whoa. Disagreement. Dan, let's start with you. Fiction. Well, I think right now this is something a lot of different companies are getting into, and there is space to grow. I don't expect people to necessarily choose one over the other. I have friends who use Spotify, friends who are excited about Apple Music, friends who use Beats. And to me, all I care about is I want to hear the song I want to hear right now. I don't want to hear an ad, and I want it to work. I don't really care who provides it for me, and I don't see that changing. Erin, you disagree. Well, I mean, I think that part of the reason, or part of the way that we're going to get there is that we have one company that offers all of it. All of this fragmentation is actually more complicated for the consumer. And Robert, you're on Aaron's side on this? I totally think so, yeah. I mean, uh, to be honest with you, not to pick favorites, but I think Spotify is the clear leader right now. They've been around for a long time. They've got tens of millions of users. Uh, and some of the other products like Pandora, I think, have cooled. Well, that brings us to our next question. Fact or fiction, music streaming will become increasingly more profitable. Fact or fiction? Fact, fact, fiction. All right, I'm going to start with you, Dan, again. I just don't see people wanting to spend a lot of money on this in the future. And, you know, maybe there are other revenue streams for them. Maybe they offer some kind of goodies. But as I said, I just want the basic product to work. It's similar to watching a, a sports event on TV. I just want to see the game. I don't want there to be an interruption. I don't need any bells and whistles. And none of my friends are paying for music anymore. When was the last time I bought an album? Robert, you disagree with this. I do disagree. I think that these services are going to get more subscribers, and as they get more subscribers, they're going to get more revenue, and they're only going to become more profitable. Maybe it's a little bit of wishful thinking on my part, too, because I'm hoping the artists get paid better, um, but I do think they're going to start making more money. I mean, the, problem, the problem with this, though, is that it, it requires buy-in from everybody. Like the, the subscribers, the artists, uh, the labels, and you know, Spotify or the, the, the music streaming services themselves all have to kind of agree, OK, this is the model we're going to do, and we're going to, and we're going to actually make it work. And right now, there's obviously a lot of disagreement. You can ask Taylor Swift. That's a good point. <laughs> all right, here we go. Fact or fiction, music streaming services need to offer more than music. And video streaming services need to offer more than video to succeed. Fact or fiction? All right, Aaron, I'll start with you. Uh, I mean, this is the kind of goes back to what I said earlier. You know, right, we're already seeing this happen where Spotify has a video product that they're preparing to launch. YouTube just launched its own music channel that also, you know, has streaming video. Um, I, I think people are going to want all of their stuff in one place, and that that includes video, that includes uh, you know uh, music, that includes pretty much any kind of content that they want. And so I think it makes sense that we're seeing a little bit of a convergence right now because the the landscape is way too complicated. And Dan, you want your product separate? Yeah, you know, it's a little bit like you're shopping. I mean, I'm creeped out by the Walmart Target thing of being able to buy socks in the same aisle I can buy milk. And similarly, I think there are certain tech platforms that are better for music, some I like better for video, and some I want to do my social networking on. I don't like to use one thing for everything the way that Facebook wants me to. Mm. All right, last question. Fact or fiction, more people will be persuaded to pay for streaming services. Show your cards. Fact or fiction. All right, Robert, why fact? Well, I think that there are so many options coming out there. You've got Apple Music that wants to convince people they've been waging it in a, in a charm offensive to try and get people to pay for their service. Uh, Tidal also launched with much fanfare to try and get people to subscribe. Of course, that's kind of fizzled by now. Um, but I think that they are going to be convincing people. I think that the uh, benefits of paying for a service, for, for instance, if you pay for Spotify, you can listen to stuff offline. Mm -hmm. I think that these are only going to become more compelling for people in the future. Aaron, you agree? I mean, I agree because I, I think now the artists are coming out and saying, listen, we are not making money right now. And if you want to listen to our song, like the, the artists appealing to the fans is really what's going to tip, uh, tip the scales, I think. And then Dan, you disagree. Yeah, I'm just I'm a skeptic here. I think artists make more of their money on tour, and there's a reason for that. I mean, people will pay to go see Taylor live. Will they pay to stream her song when I can currently still get it for free? No. All good points. That concludes this episode of Fact or Fiction. Thank you all for playing.